Yeah. All right. So uh, this week, uh, I think uh, last before week uh, we met, and um, um, so this week I wanted to um, go with some uh, uh, process related uh, uh, topics. Okay. Uh, because anyway, as a part of webinars, uh, webinar, uh, webinars and other seminars, we are doing uh, people related uh, uh, topics. Okay. So I thought of uh, going back and then uh, uh, completing the um, recur the uh, process related topics. Uh, I have picked up uh, uh, task number nine, which is uh, integrate project planning activities. Okay. Um, this actually talks about uh, uh, three different uh, uh, processes. Okay. Um, okay. So one is uh, we know when we integrate all the planning processes, what you will get when we integrate all the planning processes at the end of planning, you integrate everything. What are we getting? Deliverables? No, 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 no. We, it's still planning, sir. We have not started executing. Okay. We're still planning. We bits and pieces okay. we plan, right? We plan scope, yeah, we yeah. plan schedule, we plan cost, yeah. risk, procurement, everything we will plan. Yeah. And there is a process called a knowledge area called integration. Okay. So you will integrate all the planning processes in order to get a integrated project management plan. Yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, correct. Right. So we will get an integrated project management plan. So, and then uh, if you if you see the vertical vertical knowledge area of integration, okay, the first process is your project charter, correct? And okay. then uh, the next process is uh, develop PMP. That means develop project management plan. And uh, that means where all the subsidiary plans, scope management, cost management, schedule management, quality management, all of them will be the input of this particular process, right? And uh, you'll get a, a, a integrated project management plan out of uh, this process. And then you go and uh, execute. So during your execution, again, you will integrate all our executing processes. And then we'll put it in a uh, uh, direct and managed project work. Okay, that we call it as direct and managed project work. When you integrate all executing processes, the process called direct and managed project work. Similarly, when you do integrate all monitoring and control processes, there is one process called monitor and control project work. Correct? And then that goes to the close uh, project or phase. So this is a vertical way, a vertical knowledge area of uh, integration. And in between, you'll also have integrated, uh, perform integrated uh, change control, correct? And uh, we also have uh, manage project knowledge. Okay. Now, I'll tell you one thing, sir, to both of you. Uh, since we are going for uh, PMP examination, uh, all the process related, okay, a uh, flow, you just need to capture process related flow. That's it. Okay. From the beginning, how all the processes are connected. Uh, that means uh, like uh, two ways. One is horizontal way, like process groups, initiation, planning, execution, monitoring and control and uh, closure. Let me just... Uh, uh, put it on a note and then share my screen. That will be meaningful, actually. So I didn't get the, I didn't bring my, uh, this uh, no writing pad. Okay. So I'm struggling, actually. So next time I'll try to do that. Okay. Um, so process, process flow. We call that as process flow diagram also. Okay. So one way is uh, you go with the, uh, process groups that's a very simple set correct initiation plan uh -huh. execution execution mnc and uh -huh. close okay so what uh, you just give you see we will have a, a, a we have that uh, ppt right 
how many yeah. processes are there in as part of initiation group what are the process in how many process in planning how many process in execution then monitoring and control and closure closure has only one initiation has only two okay so now to, to uh, total we will get 49 processes okay how are they arranged from the beginning which of the document okay what is the um, uh, when the project conceives okay or uh, whenever the project conceived what is the first document that i'm uh, uh, creating okay justifying uh, the you know the out outcomes of the project keeping the description of the project i didn't uh, okay uh, object writing the objective of the project getting the high level scope uh, identifying the sponsor identifying the project manager so all these starts from project charter correct so that that's actually the first process that we follow when you start uh, uh, doing the project management so that happens part of initiation okay so from project charter till closure how the flow okay and uh, i have a diagram now so okay we will do a small exercise from initiation till planning okay what is the flow okay we will uh, we will do these two as one iteration and the next iteration is uh, we will uh, uh, understand the execution followed by monitoring and control and closure so three parts okay so today i wanted to go with these three different parts okay so the first one okay uh, i'll go with this uh, uh, exercise initiation and planning have you seen this picture sir i guess yeah. we have done part of our program yes, sir. program we have done but we are having okay material acha acha okay so now shall we go and identify the processes out outputs so we need somewhere i think i have put all the process here let us just document uh, let's recall all the knowledge and then go and uh, keep the out outcomes and other things of it okay yeah. um so now we will get some knowledge right from the beginning yes what is in the initiation we have two process develop charter identify stakeholder what is the output of develop charter? Start, uh, project charter. Project charter. And then output of uh, identify stakeholder. Stakeholder register. Right? Fantastic. You'll get stakeholder register. Okay. Ah, and then uh, let us move to the scope. Okay. So for every knowledge area, see like scope, schedule, resource cost procurement and i put some quality somewhere and communication so these are all vertical areas so every area the first process is plan that area so plan scope management is a process you will get a scope management plan correct yes yeah, scope with management output. Plan. along with scope management what you will get requirement uh, great and plan Require Q U requirement management plan. Okay. Requirements management plan. This is the second output out of plan scope management. Okay. And then once you identify this guiding documents, you'll go and start collecting your requirements. Correct? Yeah. So what yeah. is the uh, output of collecting the once you collect the requirements, what you will get? Uh, how will you collect it so meaning uh, you'll arrange a face uh, uh, you, we will facilitate a workshop and we'll call upon all the stakeholders because we have already got this uh, uh, stakeholder register we know who are the stakeholders and what is their stake what is their interest or power inside my project so based on that I will call upon all my internal external stakeholders to the team, uh, to the workshop and start collecting the requirements. That means you just gather all the requirements. When you gather all the requirements, what you'll have? You will have a list of requirements, correct? So that means uh, uh, requirements document. 
requirements documented is the output when you have the requirements document hmm so we also need to create requirements traceability matrix correct rtm Okay. requirements traceability matrix so both are output of the collect requirements okay and what is output of defined scope very very important scope scope uh, scope management plan no scope management plan has come from plan scope management yeah yeah sorry 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 I mean, so uh, once okay. you define the scope meaning keeping this all requirements and then uh, manage uh, rtm okay you will define yeah. the scope that means we will identify what are the in scope items out of scope items correct and we will yeah. draw a line we will for the in scope items that means considerable scope with the customer okay these are the um uh, elements okay uh, or these are the modules that we are freezing so with this scope okay ha huh, uh, that may um, um, uh, you will uh, have the uh, see we have two different things project scope and product scope correct so project okay. scope will have a uh, boundaries limits and product scope will have hmm acceptance criteria correct so the yeah. scope is defined but how will you accept this towards the end of your project how will you accept okay he may say when let's say we are making a uh, you know a four wheeler car okay as a manufacturer we are making a car yeah. wherein we will keep uh, will you will have a uh, you know um, uh, uh, recliners in the car you will have uh, this much of boot space you will have these these features all that scope part of scope correct and uh, for the recliner what is the acceptance criteria how much it should recline how much angle it should give you is it 45 degrees or it will go till 60 and um, you know beyond 45 or within 60 to 45 correct we need to put that that is acceptance criteria only Uh, recl keeping recliner is not you know it's not acceptable unless uh, the, there is a defined parameters right calibration so you go and look at it okay is it coming uh, till this place or not you will check and then only you will accept it so that we need to identify in, in the scope document okay so the acceptance criteria and then deliverables deliverables acceptance criteria that is part of product scope and project scope will have uh, uh, boundaries uh, and then uh, assumptions and constraints isn't it so keeping everything we will keep it in one document what is that document S scope statement Pro project scope statement pss did you get it now sir i'm sorry i'm not able to hear you people clearly you speaking right yes sir yes sir am yes, yes. connecting another device just uh, okay 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 i'm connecting another device sir sir that's right all right you will see like i connected with mobile so i'm on live the mobile uh, laptop all right yes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. Should I wait? Okay. I'll wait, sir. No problem. Since we are only uh, two of yeah. us. Two minutes. Now. Okay. Just, just give me five minutes. Five. Yeah. You carry on. I'll, I'll connect. Otherwise, I'll carry on. Yes. Yes. That will be. Hmm. Don't, uh, don't wait. So, um, so we will get project scope statement. Okay. project scope statement is output of define scope and uh, create wbs so we know wbs structure is one of the outputs the other one is wbs dictionary correct wbs correct. and wbs dictionary both are the outputs of create wbs and so i have 
done with the scope. I planned the scope and then inside the scope management plan, um, uh, I go and I went ahead and then uh, start collecting the requirements. I got a requirements document and uh, I, yeah. I defined the scope. I have put everything in project scope statement. As I said, I clearly differentiate between a product scope and project scope and identify the boundaries, identify the deliverables, identify the constraints and assumptions, I didn't document it documented the uh, acceptance criteria everything i have done and i freeze the document and then i created the wbs and tell me what should i get so once you've done with the scope huh so we need to freeze the scope right so that yeah. is scope baseline so baseline yeah this is a scope baseline <laughs> See, why are we, you know, uh, uh, pressing so much or, uh, you know, in this particular integration is um, some of the questions, okay, um, that will really ask you the flow. So, once you get to know the flow of these processes, once you know that, uh, you know, flow of these processes, you will be able to answer the question. Okay, so you just look at the uh, options, you can easily identify it. Okay, so, all right. Um, so, scope baseline is done, then we'll move into the schedule. All right, I'm sorry. So now the scope uh, schedule management. So the, as we know, the first uh, process is plan schedule management. The output of that process is schedule management plan. The schedule management plan. Yeah. Okay. What does schedule management plan contains? For that matter, any plan, any subsidiary plan. This is one of the component scope management plan we have. But schedule management plan consists of, huh, uh, how we should schedule your plan what will be the uh, the formats of a project management plan what should be the format do you want to make a gantt charts using uh, following tools so they may they may decide to go see uh, with a, um, a jira tool you see you will have a lot of tools inside this um, you know uh, this area correct Nowadays, we, we are getting a lot of tools, but what kind of tool that suits to the organization that has to be decided? How will you decide the, which tool I should use? Okay, so we need to identify the approach, schedule approach, okay, schedule methodology. We need to identify the schedule methodology. Are we going in agile methodology or a iterative methodology? Correct or a waterfall methodology. So based on, so we will have to identify the methodology first, and then uh, identify the tools and techniques. Okay, that anyway organization will give it to us. So they will make a decision saying that yes, uh, if we use Primavera P6 Professional, that actually suits our industry, or Microsoft Project, that suits our industry. So they'll tell us. Okay. So all that will be documented in the schedule management plan. So that is a responsibility of project manager to document all this. So you, when you see all these planning um, plans, scope management plan, schedule management plan, cost management plan, we will have nine subsidiary plans, right? So for every plan, okay, the common tool and technique is the expert judgment. The common output is your EEF and OPA from the organization because we will have to look at the best practices, industry practices, and what our organization is being, uh, you know, uh, being followed. Correct. All that is required. We need an expert judgment. We need SME support to to finalize this such SOP documents is required. Okay. So once you do that, you go and uh, now we have everything input inside the schedule management plan document and then go and define your activities okay because how will you define so we already created your work breakdown 
you go and further detail your wbs so obviously we'll get a uh, defined activities surprisingly if you see uh, rather than wbs scope baseline is the input to your defined activities okay scope baseline is input to the defined activities even in you see if you see in the idto pimbok you'll have the same but when you go inside the pimbok and then look at that particular area they'll say scope baseline contains two important documents one is a scope statement and wbs both forms together they will freeze the scope okay scope baseline has two important documents scope statement and wbs so this wbs is the input to your activity list okay that's how it is right so it will be very easy right this is easy see we don't need a scope statement to define your activities in fact wbs is required the wbs is there in your scope baseline so obviously the scope baseline has become an input to define activities so defining the task list so you will get a task list activity list you will get activity attributes attributes means the activity id activity name the activity duration the start date finish date all that these are all attributes of an activity okay uh, and then milestones list which is very very important okay so uh, if you are a project manager when we are doing the projects okay so along with identifying your activities we need to also identify the milestones because milestone is also a one of the line items in your gantt chart or in your project management plan okay milestone is somewhere uh, see it cannot be somewhere else correct milestones are part of your um here yeah. a plan it also kind of line item but only thing is milestones when you say milestone according to the pimbok um uh, it's a significant event in the plan correct milestone is a significant event or a significant point that means that indicates the achievement of something okay so in the industry when you ask anyone they'll say milestones are zero day durations that doesn't have duration they'll straight away say that milestone is a zero day duration because that doesn't have any you know uh, any effort it is only a it will indicate that something is achieved so all that achievements we will identify and then put them as a line item and make it as a milestone end of phase okay end of a phase completing com uh, completion of design okay that we can identify it as a milestone but you should have a line item in your plan keep a line item and then make it as a milestone and connect all related activities to the milestone so that you'll understand okay when are we when am i completing the design okay and uh, milestone report uh, helps your uh, senior management to look at the progress they just want to see the milestone status okay if they look at the yes the detailed engineering is in uh, is completed and some other uh, basic engineering is completed detail is, is not yet they'll understand what is the progress of the project they don't need to go through the plan so milestone report is required so we need to identify a list of milestones and go and put sequence do the sequencing with your activity list what you will get out of sequencing once you bring them into sequence what you will get network diagram correct we'll get schedule network schedule network diagram is the output of sequence activities we know what is sequence activities right bringing mm -hmm. them in a logical sequence using uh, uh, four types of relationships finish to start start to start finish yeah. to finish and start to finish and also the one more tool and technique is leads and lags okay applying lead and lag with relationship types uh, we can bring any scenario we can bring it to um this uh, through this relationships types okay 
Only thing is uh, uh, we need to identify right dependency. Okay. Sometimes the activity, both activities are depending on a start dates. Sometimes activities are depending on the finish dates. So we need to analyze the situation and then keep it, whether it's a start to start dependency or finish to finish dependency or uh, finish to start with uh, some lead or lag. That is, uh, that is project manager's discretion, what to keep based on, you know, anyway, uh, SME is required for sequencing also. If you go to sequence activities process, it needs a tool and technique. It needs expert judgment also. Or uh, your, uh, you know, your team members are also is required to uh, identify the right dependencies. Then you'll get a schedule network diagram. We know the advantages of having the schedule network diagram because I can immediately go and identify the critical path. Correct? So from the network, we can identify the uh, critical path and then we know the advantages. So once you identify critical path, you can go and apply schedule compression. Uh, we can do a lot of things to optimize the uh, timelines. But uh, uh, timelines are, are alone is not sufficient, correct? Unless we have a, a responsibility of the tasks and then uh, we can also have to have a estimations of the cost. Everything should be there. And then durations. As of now, we are not talking about the durations. So the next process is estimate activity durations. Okay. So how will you estimate? You will know the, uh, the scope of work. Okay. You know the scope of work by looking at the line item. Correct. Laying foundation. Okay, you know the scope. Okay, 100 SFT to be uh, laid as a foundation. Okay, how long will it take? You know, we have a lot of estimation techniques. Analogous estimation, parametric estimation, three-point estimation. Correct. So, you apply all of them and then bring them uh, the estimates. The output of estimate activity duration is duration estimates. Okay, five days, three days, ten days. Like that, you will get a duration estimates. But even to get these estimates, we need to keep the resources in mind. Correct. Otherwise, how will you give the estimate? Okay. So, we, you know how many team members are available for you. So, that goes to the resource resources. Okay. Um, so, what is... Uh, so, here, let us see. Resource, estimate activity resources. Estimate activity resources. So, activity resource requirements is one of the output. What else? Estimate activity resources. Activity resource requirements. Mm. And uh, when you acquire resources, okay, based on uh, their availability, how will you acquire? Based on the availability. So, in the output of this process is we will get the resources calendars and uh, team assignments or resource assignments. Resource assignments. Because acquiring meaning assigning a resource, assigning resource to the task. So, when you assign a resource to, uh, you know, a five-day activity, so when you go to the resource usage, they'll understand, okay, Sam is working on so-and-so activities. That is resource assignment. That is also, I mean, that's one of the output of acquired resources. Similarly, when you go to the estimate costs, so these three, estimate activity duration, estimate activity resources, estimate activity costs are closely integrated together because to estimate your resources, okay, you will check uh, how many resources have been allocated. But uh, to estimate durations, we need to know what is the how many resources are there with me. Then you will estimate the duration. When you assign resources, when you do this acquire resources, obviously system calculates the cost because this person, okay, senior design engineer, okay, per hour, his standard rate is a hundred US dollars per hour. You assign him to a five-day activity. What is the cost? 
So individual activity cost estimates will happen. All right. So next time when we meet, I will uh, try to show you the same uh, in a MS project. Okay. Or time permits, we will do it today. Okay. Simulation. So when you integrate all the planning processes, how the durations are estimated, resource assignments are rolled up, and how costs are rolled up, we will see practically. Then uh, once you see the practicals in, uh, I mean, uh, in the tool, tomorrow we will, you know, uh, visualize. So when a scenario is asked as a question, you can uh, visualize. Okay, this this can happen. This is the flow, and uh, you will easily get the right answer. Now here, estimate cost, obviously we will get activity cost estimates. That means a, a one resource is working on five day activity, total uh, cost is this much. But we need to justify, no? So the other thing is basis, we will get the basis of estimate. On what basis you you are saying that 1000 US dollars, 2000 US dollars, or it can be uh, INR, 1 lakh, 2 lakh, 3 lakh. You'll get an estimate. Yes, 2 lakhs of estimate. But on what basis? How are you? How did you calculate 2 lakhs? Yes, boss, one user license is called one monthly this much. So annual, the project is going to be one year. So one year annual budget is 2 lakhs. That is the basis. All right. Uh, let us uh, uh, just go a little above. But okay, let us finalize the schedule. So I've got activities, I've got the sequence, resource estimates, assign resource assignments, uh, and then uh, duration estimates. Okay. Okay. And now develop schedule. Under develop schedule, you'll get the project schedule and then schedule data. We will get the schedule data and then the entire project schedule. And what is the output of develop schedule? So there is one more baseline, right? From scope, we have a scope baseline and in the schedule, we will have schedule baseline. We'll get schedule baseline out of schedule, yeah. develop schedule process. Okay. So for this develop schedule process, it is integration of uh, your durations, uh, sequencing, resources, everything. You will finalize the timeline. When we go just one step ahead, so here is the cost. So under cost vertical, I'll let me just put it, uh, plan cost management, you'll get a cost management plan. From resources, we will get one more document called team charter, correct? Team yeah. charter is one of the important documents where we will document the team uh, ground rules, uh, team norms, all that, uh, a common team culture, a team language, all of them we will uh, document it and put it here. Okay. Uh, from cost, I have very uh, a very few process. One is plan cost management, estimate costs, where I'll get a cost estimates and also basis of estimates. And when I determine budget, determine budget is nothing but aggregating aggregating individual cost estimates, aggregating individual cost estimates and rolling up to its uh, own summaries. Okay, so when you do that, we will get a total project cost. That is nothing but, uh, and then you do, um, uh, uh, when you roll up, then you roll up individual cost to the WBS and WBS to the overall project summary. And we will freeze the cost. That we call as, called as cost baseline. Cost baseline. Okay, cost. I'm sorry, okay. We are getting a cost baseline. All right. Okay, so we are getting some outputs and also baselines. I think we have got all the three baselines. Okay, just go back and then look at the plan communication management output is uh, communication management plan and uh, stakeholder, plan stakeholder engagement. So stakeholder will get uh, engagement, stakeholder engagement plan. And uh, let us see the risk, uh, quality. 
So quality, plan quality, you'll get quality, quality management plan. And there is one component under quality management plan is the quality metrics. Metrics. Yeah, quality metrics. That is part of uh, quality management plan. Okay, quality metrics is a subsidiary uh, component. And uh, risk. So plan risk management, risk management plan. And uh, you have a lot of things are here. Identify risk, perform qualitative risk analysis, perform quantitative risk analysis, plan risk responses. Yes, All of them we will document in one, one register. What is that? Risk register. Risk register. All this contributes to the risk register. Okay. And uh, yes. So uh, uh, plan procurement management. So, see, uh, procurement has uh, very few processes. I guess only two processes. One is uh, plan procurement management. The other one is conduct procurement, which goes to the execution. Correct? So, plan procurement management is very important area. Okay? You will be asked a uh, good number of questions in this also. But uh, for only for the planning here. So, how many outputs? So, we are getting one, one of the output is procurement management plan and procurement documents and procurement strategy, make or buy decision. Source and selection. pardon? Source, Correct. Source, selection. Source selection criteria. Source selection criteria. That is also one of the uh, outputs out of uh, plan procurement management. Okay. What else is missing? Quality is there, risk, uh, procurement, stakeholder. I guess we have covered all. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, only initiation and planning process group integration. Okay. When you integrate these two, this is how it is from the initiation till uh, uh, baselines. Okay. Now we need to identify. Okay. Um, the documents, plans, and baselines all put together. See, when you go to Pimbog, you'll have one slide, okay, where they'll document all the buckets, okay. In one bucket, you will have uh, the project documents, and in one bucket, we will have uh, uh, subsidiary plans, and on, and on the other bucket, you will have the baselines. Okay, so how many subsidiary plans? 18. No, no, these are all total together. It will be 18, sir. Okay. But the plans, so scope management plan, requirements okay. management plan, schedule management plan, schedule, resource, resource cost, cost, procurement, quality. risk, quality, yeah. communication, stakeholder. Yeah. yeah. 10 have come. Yeah. 10 yeah. plans. And in addition to it, we will also have change management plan and configuration management plan. Yeah. Okay. So adding to it, so change management and config, uh, conf, uh, 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 configuration, you'll have 12. And now uh, 12 plans and three baselines. What are the three baselines? Scope, scope, scope baseline, scope, schedule baseline. And cost, cost baseline. Cost so baseline. 12 plus 3. 15. 15. And we have two things like uh, life cycle, development life cycle, ah, performance, performance the, um, uh, measurement. measurement baseline, PMB. Yes, okay. And you integrate, in the integration you will have performance measurement baseline. Yes. Ah, the That is 16th document. Yes. And 17th document is your uh, project, project life cycle and then the development okay. life cycle. All right. So all this together, we are getting 18 such documents out of planning. Okay. But you don't need to memorize everything and in a, you know, flow, but we just need to know, okay. Um, uh, which documents are coming from planning. Okay. okay. So now this exercise will enable you recall, recollect all initial documents till planning. Okay. And then execution. So we are talking about one topic, one uh, task, right? 
uh, integration. What is the topic today? <coughs> planning activities. Integration management plan. Not integration management plan, sir. This um, the task name. What is the task name? Integrate project planning activities. Planning, okay. Integrate project planning activities. That is the topic. Link is open. Oh, yes. Send some message here. here. So this is one of the um, uh, tasks, right? In inside your uh, uh, exam content outline, one of the tasks. And uh, I feel this is more relevant now. Okay. Um, so we have completed integrated project management plan. One only one process by now. So integrating all planning processes, we have arrived at develop. Uh, project plan okay and then the, now the execution so what are the things when you integrate all of them you will get uh, okay uh, through which process you will integrate all the execution processes direct and manage project work direct and manage project work is a process correct which is there here yeah this is integration project integration in that Direct and manage project work and manage project knowledge. Mm -hmm. Two things are there. Okay. Um, so now uh, let us just talk about the other processes of uh, uh, integration. Okay. Um, so these are all, sorry, other process of execution. So we have seen uh, uh, planning processes so far. Now these are executing processes, execution. Uh, resource related what are uh, see in the scope now tell me we have a lot of uh, um, here uh, knowledge areas we know all the 10 knowledge areas scope okay do you have any uh, execution process from scope there is no execution process from scope correct mm. nothing Okay. So there is see uh, what are the processes in scope management uh, plan scope collect uh, requirements define scope create wbs uh, and then validate scope and control scope validate scope control scope so most of us will think that my validate scope part of execution no okay that both of them are part of monitoring and control okay let us understand why so one uh, uh, okay that is a little later we'll understand so scope th there is no execution process uh schedule nothing our schedule we have no. anything no no right and then uh, go to uh, cost. cost cost it doesn't have anything no okay whereas resources we have three uh okay. processes because when you ex when you start executing your plan you will execute with the people yes so we need re resources so uh during execution you act we actually acquire resources correct so uh, we will do the negotiations with the resource managers functional managers and bring uh, all uh, the skill set required resources to your plan and then uh, develop them uh, by providing the trainings, okay? And then manage them by uh, resolving the conflicts, correct? So all these project managerial skills you need, to, you need to use during execution. And what is the execution process for quality? Plan well, quality management is for planning and manage quality is a execution. How will you manage quality? You We would have already planned some uh planned some quality activities otherwise in the planning what is a part of quality okay so in the plan in your integrated project management plan we need to plan we need to uh, plan some quality activities that means we will uh, create some audits correct you'll internal audits you will do an internal audits maybe you know according to the feasibility you will plan for internal audits. That's where you'll go and execute. You'll identify some of your senior team members as a, you know, quality inspectors and then um, ask them to audit. 
audit the process. They'll go and audit the process. And then, uh, yes, boss, uh, so what we are following is, uh, is okay. It is giving good results. So for every week, we are keeping a retrospective meeting. Every day, we are doing a stand-up meetings. And, uh, you know, even the review meetings have been increased. The iterations of review meetings increased. Sometimes, the more meetings you have, the more you will lose. Because we will be always talking, sitting, gathering the meetings, gathering in meetings, and we will, you know, uh, deviate the work. Okay. So, wherever is required, how many types of meetings are required, then those only we need to keep. So, my auditors, they will audit the process and come back and tell me, Sam, we are having a lot of, uh, you know, unnecessary meetings, more than an hour, without an agenda. We have been spending more time. Their recommendations, they will recommend you to uh, improve the process. Correct? So then what I'll do as a project manager, yes, okay. So I understand this. I understood this. Okay, let us have uh, a clear agenda for the meetings and meetings should not go beyond one hour. I'll put the time frame. That is where we will improve the process. And uh, schedule. Sorry, stakeholders. Stakeholders. Uh, plan stakeholder engagements are there, correct? Pl sorry, plan stakeholder management, uh, engagement only. Here, manage stakeholder engagement. How, what, what, is, what does it mean? In the plan stakeholder, we have created stakeholder register and we have done some stakeholder analysis, correct? With the stakeholder register, we have done the analysis and uh, we identified um, what is the current level of engagement of your stakeholder. And uh, we have documented some strategies to bring the stakeholder into the, your desired level of engagement. That means you know a stakeholder, one of your team member is a key stakeholder, but he is very reluctant to support the team. You identified that. So during the managed stakeholder engagement, you will apply all those strategies. Okay. So you will involve him in all the meetings and keeping him in front. Okay. So when you give some, you know, a, a respectable position to your uh, uh, team member, he will slowly start involving and start supporting. Correct. So like that, you'll have a lot of such techniques. So you need to do it. And then you will, we will ensure to make him, you know, bring uh, to the supportive, whatever, how, whatever your desire. Okay, we will bring him to the desired position. That is managed stakeholder. Conduct procurements, releasing all the bids, correct? Releasing the contracts, placing the orders, uh, tender doc, releasing tender documents, all of them. Communication manage management. So you have planned some uh, uh, communication act, uh, communication uh, um, strategy. You will go and release the communication. You tell them, authorize your work. Tell them your team, hey boss, uh, team one. Okay, you go and start the work. Okay, this is your uh, uh, area where to go and work. Okay, you just, just release them the communication either through hardbound copies or through the mail, all through over, over the phone. How much? Whatever we have planned, you go and do that. And when it comes to risk, there is one process. Implement risk responses. That's it. So we have a lot of uh, planning risk processes. Identify risk. Ah, uh, plan risk management is the first process. And identifying the risks is the second. And uh, perform quantitative risk analysis. Perform qualitative risk analysis. And, and then... Risk response. Risk responses. Documenting risk responses. So these are five planning process. And in the um, uh, execution, you will implement those responses. That's it. Okay. You want some of the risks you identified, you want to mitigate them. You do. How, what is the strategy of mitigation? What is your mitigation strategy? Okay. You do it. You execute that. Okay. You want to avoid. Okay. By what? By doing what I should avoid the risk. Okay, you go and do that. So uh, to avoid the, you know, rains, unexpected rains, I mean, or uh, you to uh, uh, unexpected, we cannot uh, avoid, right? That since it is itself, it's saying unexpected, but to avoid the rains, 
from the offshore activities you don't you don't plan your offshore activities during the monsoon okay you can keep it either before the monsoon or later the monsoon so by doing it you will avoid the risk of uh, getting the rain but this year 2022 you should pardon me so 22 is exceptional i don't know from where uh, okay what is the purpose what is the reason of coming the rains this year is a year of rain i should call isn't it do you agree with me yep okay but i don't know from where which part of india you're connecting from but uh, when it comes to andhra pradesh and telangana i'm based out of uh, hyderabad sitting hyderabad sitting in hyderabad you'll have a lot of things correct so i mean sorry a lot of rains a lot of rains uh, this year so okay so implement all your uh, uh, responses so integrate all of them as part of direct and managed project work. So integrating, see, that's why we have put some arrows. So these are all inputs to direct and managed project work. So do, through direct and managed project work, you will give the deliverables, correct? We will generate deliverables. So we will get deliverables out of direct and managed project work. We will uh, get the change requests. Change request is also in output of uh, direct and managed project work. Okay. And work performance data, WPDs, are outputs of uh, direct and managed project work. Correct? Because you the, we, we start executing. We start authorizing the work to the team members. They go and start doing the work. We have released the communications, released the tender documents. Okay, all of them. And then uh, during the execution, we will get the data saying that, okay, how, how long have you completed? Boss, I have completed five days of work. Boss, I have completed 20% of work. Boss, I have completed 35% of work. So this is the data that we are getting out of execution, direct and managed project work. Okay, but, but what else we need, in fact? So you don't need the data. Data doesn't communicate anything to anybody. It only says, yes, he has completed five days of work. He has completed 20% of project. But uh, how much he's supposed to work? How much he's supposed to complete? That is the information, correct? That is the information. Without, uh, you know, without info, information, you cannot generate a report. So we need a meaningful information. So, during execution, we will get the work performance data and in the, ex in the monitoring and control, you will further analyze the data. You will take this as input, WPD as input to the monitoring and control. And when you compare these things to your baseline plan, okay, what was planned by this as on uh, end of October, as on first week of November, 45% should have been completed. Now they have completed 30%. Okay. So they're supposed to complete 45%, but they only completed 30%. 15% is a variance as on first week of November. That is the information. That information, you will get it through monitoring and control okay so these are all the execution activity uh, execution uh, uh, tasks okay the execution means translating plan into execution acquire team negotiate resource manager assess the skills build the team by providing training conduct building activities authorize work to the team resolve conflicts team correct and then see here work performance data is part of execution you will get a wpd and that has to be further evaluated to the monitoring and control. And you'll raise requests um, in the execution. You document lessons learned. You update lessons learned. Okay. Uh, conduct audits. Recommend process improvements. Implement strategies. Then release communications. Raise uh, document uh, issue logs. Assign an honor to it. Implement responses as per plan. This is all execution. Okay, release documents. That's a part of procurement. 
and then here is the overall you know uh, picture of direct and managed project work process okay see one of the major outputs are change request and deliverables both of them are outputs and further outputs are deliverables work performance data issue log so issue log is the document that will born during execution okay in the execution you will get a new document you will open a new sheet and uh, uh, wherever you get an issues go and log the issue log the issue identify your owner to wait and then discuss that in the immediate next week i mean immediate meeting or maybe what whenever the nearest retrospect meeting you'll go and discuss with the team and then start addressing that issue okay and then change request and uh, uh, plan goes into a lot of updates right when you do when you get a new change request you will go and update your plan you will go and update your uh, lessons learned document update your risk register all that is possible and all these uh, outputs from uh, execution or especially this direct and managed work will go to will go as input to the monitoring and control processes on my right hand side here if you see these are my monitoring and control process see the validate scope is a monitoring and control process control scope control schedule control cost control quality resources monitor communication risk monitor risk and then monitor stakeholder engagement these are all my uh, monitoring and uh, control processes let me see here i have all that what i have showed you in the vertical way here is a uh, the other picture in the in the middle what are integrate uh, project in, in integration knowledge area processes monitoring and control project work perform integrated change control these are the two things okay so i just wanted to put uh, uh, in a uh, i see i have got some uh, um uh, predefined our diagrams where prashant do it right i wanted to use that to explain this flow okay let us see the next one so here is um the flow of deliverables okay because deliverables is a primary output of uh, um, um uh, execution that how deliverables will go through the monitoring and control and closure okay so deliverables will be will have to be um you know um verified correct you need to verify how will you verify through a control quality process because we cannot whatever team generates the deliverables we cannot give it to the customer unless you verify internally correct unless you verify you cannot give it to the customer so using the control quality process using the control quality process you will get a verified deliverables so what do we do using control quality okay you with the deliverables you go and check the quality metrics as i said right you go and check whether is it meeting whatever the uh, identified metrics and also you go and check with the plan project management plan what else we plan are we completing or not and through this you will also get a change requests we'll get a change. see if this is not up to the quality uh, uh, you know decide i mean uh, committed quality you will immediately raise a change request to your team member saying that you go and rework you do that and you will get a verified deliverables and that see who verified who verified your performing organization will verify it customer organization has not verified it correct so to yeah. accept the customer to 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 accept the deliverables by the customer customer should uh, validate right so now these verified deliverables will go to the scope validation so validate scope validate scope process actually the, your customer will come and validate it customer valid as i said no see these things we have put it acceptance criteria all that is part of project scope statement correct pss in the project scope statement you'll have product scope inside the project product scope 
uh, one of the components are acceptance criteria. So customer comes and do that. Okay, is it meeting my criteria or not? He will validate and then he will, the output of valid scope is acceptance, accepted deliverables. Okay, the customer will accept the deliverable once this is done. If not, he will again go to the change request. No, 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 this is not meeting my criteria. He'll put a change request again. Correct? Then the, 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 these change requests will go input to the execution again. So there is, once there is a change, that will go to the uh, change request is all uh, is a input and also output of execution. Very tricky. Change requests are input and output of execution. Because of under monitoring and control, when there is a change request, that goes as an input to the execution and then come out as a implemented change requests. Implemented change request is also output of execution. Okay. And then uh, and approved change requests is an input and uh, agreed change request is an output. Okay. Under validation, uh, as part of validation, the output is accepted deliverable. So what are the deliverables that are accepted by the customer? We will send it to the closure because these deliverables is done. Yes, we have completed these, these works and you go and give it to the closure. So what closure process does, it documents all the lessons learned, it collates all the lessons learned, put it in the repository and they started making a closure report, correct? They started making closure report of each deliverable and collate the entire um, or collaborate the entire closure report and make a final report and submit it to the customer. And then they will transition of final product. So keeping all the document and then they'll transition to the final product, either to be given it to the customer or to be given it to the operations. Correct. They'll do that. That is uh, one way. So during monitoring and control, okay, during the quality, control quality, you will inspect. Okay. So the tool and technique is called inspection. In the execution, we have done audit correct in the execution we have done audit which is internal and now this is also an internal but this, this is where we will do the inspections so a very thin line between audit and inspection audit is to check the um, um, uh, uh, process quality and inspection will go and check the output of the deliverable that will inspect the quality of the product Audits will inspect the quality of the project. Okay, that is a thin line. You have to understand this because you will have questions. Okay, so if the in the scenario, if they say, okay, uh, during the inspection, we need to identify that it is a monitoring and control process. If they say auditing, we need to understand it is an execution process. Okay, that's how we can differentiate between execution and monitoring and control, especially during this kind of uh, deliverable quality checks, other things. Okay, I have one other, one, another um, uh, picture, another flow. This is work performance data, WPDs. All WPDs you will get. What you will do from the WPD? You're getting a WPD and also the deliverables. So the deliverables workflow we have seen in the pro monitoring and control. Uh, okay, the WPDs monitoring and control is they will have all the quality processes as we see, right? We have seen validate scope, control scope, other other process, uh, control schedule, con uh, control resource, monitoring communication, all that part of uh, okay, uh, a monitoring and control. They where they will go and compare all these with the project management plan because project management plan is a a baseline plan, correct. So whether they have, they started doing, uh, executing as per the committed plan or not. Okay. So all these WPDs, WPD, as I said, no, as I said, I, I reached Hyderabad on Thursday. That is the data. I reached Hyderabad on Thursday. But uh, how, what is info you're getting? You're understanding. Okay. He has reached. That's a statement. Okay. If I say like this, I supposed to reach Hyderabad on Wednesday, but I reached on Thursday. 
then you'll understand okay that is the information oh he's supposed to reach on wednesday but he reached on thursday that means he delayed by one day due to so and so reason that is the information so that is what when you compare your uh, uh, data with the plan you will get the information that information will go through monitoring and control work process and it generates a report work performance report wpr those reports will go through again execution uh, those, as and when you get those reports you share it with your uh, team members correct and so likewise it will also go to the stakeholders during uh, the meetings we will show them the reports yes during the review meetings uh, yes this is the status of the project we supposed to complete 45 percent we completed 30 percent he'll ask you the question what immediately what what went wrong uh, because of government external uh, you know uh, approvals got delayed uh, material got delayed okay so and so reasons we can tell them and as and when required they may come up with a new uh, strategy or new scope new change request all that is possible and at last i have uh, how change requests are going through uh, the monitoring and control so we have seen deliverables go going through monitoring and uh, work, uh, work performance data going through monitoring and now change requests change request is one of the important you know um, uh, 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 work that uh, project manager should handle during the execution of the project okay change request will whenever you get a raise a change request that directly goes to perform integrated change control where you have a team called change control board ccb ccb is not see they won't be you know a board of members correct but uh, your senior team members or smes they will form a change control board where they can take a they should have authority to take decisions correct authority to release funds all that so those people will identify and put them as a change control board and then all the change requests will go through the performance integrated change control and uh, the output is the outputs the output is create a change log okay say so during execution we have created an uh, issue log and in the monitoring and control we will create a change log okay create all the changes where you document all the changes and uh, and also accepted change requests okay so you got a change so your team member came and said boss because of the lack of material we could not do okay can you please extend the duration to one week so that i can complete the project i can complete the task because uh, the raw material has arrived in the site okay i can just take it and then complete the work Ex uh, extend the timeline that's a change request has come to you so they'll go and identify is it re true or not okay yes because of uh, because of the shipment delay material got delayed so that uh, the work got delayed so yes accept accept the one week you'll accept one week uh, timeline and then give it to them so the change request is accepted accepted change request this accepted change request will go to direct and manage project work that is execution accepted change request will go to the execution and they will implement it once they implement it they'll update the documents correct because the six days of delay they have to update it in the plan and uh, they should do the rebaseline because it is an accepted change request they'll do the rebaseline and then uh, the new timelines new estimates will come up and then after completing it that again that goes to quality because you have implemented a new change uh, created the deliverable and that goes to the control quality and then that validate changes and uh, then uh, that will go to the again that will have the process right so that will go to um, accepted uh, deliverable and then a closing phase okay okay so this is the end of uh, monitoring and control flow okay at the high level uh, from initiation planning and then uh, execution and then monitoring and control. 
Yes, uh, Q and A. It's uh, seven thirteen. Any questions, or uh, did you get any something new or refreshed after yes, this sir. session? Yes, sir. Re refreshed, but uh, sometimes I'm getting some uh, confusion when I go through the uh, book <coughs> material. Mm -hmm. So, so how, uh, 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 let me ask you a question, sir. How are you reading the PIMBOK? I mean, uh, what is your approach? Yeah. You start uh, opening the chapters and reading through it or what? Uh, like, for example, I would like to study the about scope. Hmm. So, I um, go through that and then I'm studying. Is that correct uh -huh. or scope? So, yes, sir. Uh, correct, correct, correct. So, what you do is, so whenever you read the scope, you completely understand the entire scope of the, I mean, the entire knowledge area, like okay. plan scope management. And then okay. what are we doing? You just put it a high level uh, uh, bullet points in your book. Okay. Can what is scope can, management can, contains? What does hmm. it will have a guidelines? Sam, That's Sam. it. This is simple. And Sam, then go, so don't, you don't need to go through the all bullet points inside the PIMBOK. No, no. Sam. Hmm. Can you come again? For example, if, if I am studying about, uh, I would like to study about scope. 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 So first process, plan scope management. Okay, collect requirements, define scope. Uh, okay. Then create WBS and then okay. validate scope, then control scope. Six, okay. six process. Just put all the six processes. High level, what oh, are the six pro okay, 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 one minute, one minute. Like uh, six process in the sense like... Uh, uh, inside the scope, scope management vertical scope manager, vertical scope knowledge like, area okay like we need to study about planning right uh, in there in inside inside the six processes you go and identify what are the process belongs to which knowledge i mean which process group there is no initiation group from scope correct you yeah, start correct. Uh, planning so plan yeah. scope do collect requirement define scope yeah. create wbs yeah. belong to planning yeah. And control yeah. validate scope, control scope belongs to monitoring and control. Okay, okay. Just okay. Like so you will also study. get the yeah, the big picture of it, sir. Okay, okay. So when you have all this, like so once you study the scope, see it'll mm. take about three to four days. If yeah. you study two hours a day or one mm. and a half hour a day, mm. it'll take mm. about uh, more or less yeah. uh, one week just to digest, memorize mm. a few mm. things. Mm. Mm. one week is very high sir i should okay. say three to four days three to sure, four sure, days sure, 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 and sure. then you go and study schedule okay and then, okay, five, then five, uh, five. you'll also keep a uh, scope in mind and just yeah. look at the schedule how flow yeah. and then cost okay. and so you complete all the knowledge areas okay okay, okay. so within like a seven eight weeks you should be able yeah. to complete sure 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 and then take sure. an exam take uh, this one um uh, our internal uh, mock one followed by mock two review your score Review the questions where you went wrong. Just go back and just refer the notes. That's it. Refer the notes and then book. And uh, you can uh, go for the actual exam. Yeah. Like that's what like I'm getting confused. So that's what like now what you ah. said. No? So like, now uh, what you know yeah. the, here the answer is uh, you go and keep the notes on your mm. board. Mm. I mean in your scribble pad. Mm. And then uh, also look at uh, uh, Prashant's videos. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. Right. You will definitely get it, sir. Uh, you won't yeah. have any. See, once you put it on your own, mm. you'll understand. Okay, you'll deep dive into it. You'll understand. Okay, these are execution. These are monitoring and control. Mm. Most of the cases both runs in parallel, but don't complicate, sir. Exam is very. I mean, exam will be easy. It may not okay. be so easy, yeah. but once you have this kind of preparation. Mm. will definitely achieve their purpose. So you just yeah. see to get rid of your doubts or the, that fear of confusion, you just take a sample exam, uh, not a mock, not okay. a mock. Area wise exams is there in your uh, LMS. Yeah, yeah. yeah. LMS, apart from mock, we have session based quiz, mm. 10 10 questions. Just try yeah. to give after sure, completing sure. that area, just try to give the exam. You'll get yeah. confidence. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. That's what I can tell. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you can keep in touch with us and any sure, review, sure. anything is there during CFS. These are the opportunities to discuss, to sit mm -hmm. back and discuss. So you can do that. Um, and before I close, I have a link in the chat. I uh, Rahul, is it feedback a feedback form? Yes, uh, yes, yes sir. feedback yes, form name. Yeah. Uh, Sham, like uh, last day, 
I would ah. think eighth eight October, I guess. Like uh, I'm rushing, um, rushing about my travel. So that okay. time I didn't feel any uh, feedback forms. Uh, honestly speaking, so I didn't receive. Okay. After that, I didn't receive. Uh, to feel uh, feedback, feedback on uh, yeah. programs, sir. Eh? Program, yeah. I didn't feel actually, okay. so I'm run. Uh, so you would like to give us the feedback? Yeah, like. Like uh, that is also one kind of uh, practice, right? Like I have to do that. Correct, I'm, correct. I'm you need sorry. to give two two feedbacks, sir. One is our provinces internal feedback. Yeah. The other one is a post survey to PMI. Mm. Then only, unless you complete that, uh, they won't issue this thirty-five contract. You are not eligible for the thirty-five contract hours of. Uh, that's what we will what. give. Ah, we need what. to do that. Mm. Maybe that's Lakshmi, uh, Sivani, I think yes. you can help Mani Kumar, sir. Yeah. Just take uh, okay. Send uh, send him a mail again. Uh, mail, yeah, yeah. Both. I did receive the mail every day. I'm checking. Mm -hmm. Please, please, please. That, yeah, that's yeah. what like. So that will do that. Yeah. I will share you the link uh, for PMI yellow choice feedback and for provincial feedback. Yeah, please, please, please. Bill, like, I'm waiting yes, for the next one. Me also. I have, I have sent the feedback for one only. I think the second one I have not done it. I think PMI have one done. for uh, PMI Alva portal, okay. sir, or uh, provinces. No, 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 I haven't received anything. No, no, uh, Sham Kumar is saying. No, Sham, okay, 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 okay sorry. Sir. Have you done your PMI post class survey after the session? No, I have done it, but uh, 17 questions you have. Uh, you have filled all 17 questions. Yes, yes, yes. yes, I have done it. Then that is the PMI. Yellow choice. Uh, but provinces are not done, I think. So. Provinces, you are not. Okay, we'll share you the link, uh, Sham. Yes, yeah. Okay, so now this yes, is sir. the link for uh, this CFS today's session, sir. So it is there in the chat. You just provide any suggestions. How do you like it? Um, and then uh, we can close. And for this section has helped me a lot, I think. I too had the same doubt. I was uh, confused how to go through. Yeah. <laughs> See, every day I'm opening and then I'm, I'm, I'm studying something and then I'm getting confused and then closing. No, so, the, the, the thing is here, just take one uh, knowledge area, one topic, uh, put it on the paper. So the okay. high level, the, the process and then high level input outputs. And what does it mean? Okay. So when you consolidate, it will be easy, sir. You don't need to, I mean, you won't get that confusion because it is there on the fly. Okay. Uh, keep one area, complete it. So even if it takes three days, just go through uh, yeah. what that process is doing inside my project management. Okay. Okay. And okay. identify those uh, uh, questions. Okay. Where are we getting confused? Those things you just identify and uh, quick for your quick response, you post it in your uh, WhatsApp group. Okay. Okay. Just okay. Post that. Yeah. Okay. We see, I'm getting confused between these two. Can you explain? Okay. Hmm. So if I can do it, I'll do. Otherwise, it wasn't. We do. It will be easy for us. No. So that's for the uh, uh, WhatsApp group is for that. Just post okay. it. So it is not only we posting the questions and the answers A B C D. You also have to. You can utilize it. You utilize that medium. Post your question. Either for Prashant or Sinvasan or any of us will respond to it. Okay, okay. So that you don't need to stop it. Otherwise, until that query uh, goes out of our mind, we cannot go forward. So immediately put it in the WhatsApp. Maybe down the line, one one and a half day, maybe within the one where based on their freeness, they'll send you the reply. And then you can continue your preparation. Correct? You do it. Yeah. All right, sir. I think... Uh,